everyone. Hi and welcome to the official Body Spartan Podcast. My name is Gabe Tuft. I am the founder of Body Spartan and your host for the next hour. I am joined by my two incredible cohorts. First lady of Body Spartan, Priscilla Tuft. Second man of Body Spartan, Brandon Griffin. (laughs) (laughs) I just got to point this out. There was such a flow I had going there and there was this really awkward pause in between when I was introducing you. To when we spoke. To when you spoke. Well, I was waiting <laughs> for Priscilla just to step up in there. She's in the first lady of Party Spartan. First lady of You know what it was? Party I didn't Spartan. give her her intro. Normally I get oh, one. Oh, that's yeah, right. her full. Last time I got a very, very long one. And, and I kind of joined by that. my co-host Priscilla Tuft, co-founder of Body Spartan. The one, master, the Master licensed sports nutritionist, <laughs> WNSO pro cover model of Muscle Mag. BTM Magazine, Max Sports and Fitness, and of course, many spreads in Oxygen Magazine. Many spreads on now, Gabe. Just that say too. that to me every morning when you bring me my coffee. We'd be set. I heard she did quite the spread okay. last night. Fabe, brother. <laughs> K Fabe. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I do know about, though, guys? Do. Do tell. Do tell that uh, the Spartan Army Training Center mm-hmm. is live. Mm-hmm. We have fully replanted. Rebranded. <laughs> rebranded. Hey, uh, we were feeling a little bland, so we rebranded. Rebranded. We rebranded the elite member section into the Spartan Army, which is mm-hmm. fucking badass. It I'm is. so proud of this, man. I've been busting my ass for a week rebranding this thing, and it's live. And what happens, guys, is you get a weekly video, workout video that either Brandon, myself, Priscilla, Howard, or Cage will do for you guys. And you get the tabular workout. This is just for the Spartan Army members. You also get a pro fitness tip. So we're going to give you like a tweak. So basically, you know, how to do uh, different techniques, ways to maximize little things. But we're not going to give you all of our secrets. Wait a minute. Yeah, Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, Yeah, we are. 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 So you get get the workout video. You get a fitness tip video. You get a motivational video. And the reason we included that is because motivation is key. If you aren't motivated, you're going to fucking fail. End of story. So you get... A motivational video once a week that's get it doesn't get posted anywhere else you get a recipe video so we're going to show you how to cook for genesis or unleashed aka shredding and bulking we include all the macros that are associated with every single recipe we're thinking about you guys and we do this because we know variety is key when you're trying to stick to your nutrition plan and it gets boring real fucking fast mm-hmm. that's why we do a lot rice. of weird things in the kitchen sometimes like i don't know like, I don't know. Like, I feel like Howard's always doing something really crazy, and little red hair is always there wind are up little food, red but bear, beard hairs. They're, they're interesting. It's fun. We have a good time. It's, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, 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 it's almost as bad as the day he shaved his legs on the deck. But we won't talk about that because well, the last thing them. I will tell them that, but the last thing that is involved in the Spartan Army is once a week you get the Spartan Army video call where one of our badasses will be sitting in front of a webcam with up to a hundred of our Spartan Army members on the call. Mm. We usually present about 20 minutes, maybe 30 at the most on a topic that has to do with fitness or life. Or It's like a, I don't know. I mean, we've been veering off uh, the fitness course and a lot of motivational shit to keep you guys motivated. But the cool thing is at the end of the, the video call, we open it up to a Q&A. So if you are one of the members the Spartan Army members that is live on the call with us will bring your video up if you want. You don't have to have the camera. You can talk to us on audio. We'll answer your questions directly. So this is your chance to talk to one of us one-on-one, answer those questions that are just, you know, your whatever's burning a hole in your pocket, man. We're like, this is your chance to do it. So workout video, recipe, pro fitness tip, motivational video, and the video call all in the Spartan Army every single fucking week right there, motherfucker. Go to www.bodyspartan.com forward slash Spartan Army for a 30-day free trial. Or... <laughs> he can't even contain himself. Look at him. He's dying over here. <laughs> that was so good. There's so much energy. That was so... What, was, what are you so drinking? Much, what is that? So much energy. What's in there? It's water. Special water. I want some water. of that water. Whatever you... It's water. Give me I know, some of that. Pass it around. Water, quote it unquote. Blessed? Sips. Sips furiously. Oh my gosh. Did you just drip it down your Guys, chest no, just there's now? No, there's a hole in disaster. my cup. He just, there's a he hole just in my cup. poured it all over himself and looked right at me the entire time. 
I did. Things I let it, that I let are it dribble down my chin. All <laughs> right. Enough of that. Okay. So today we're talking about getting ripping looking abs. Well, a well, little more than yeah, just getting ripping looking abs. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've got to give them the pretty, full title. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty them, specific. Well, thing. I'm giving them the premise. Just we are talking about freaking six packs today. Why? Because you guys ask all the time. And so we're going to break it down for you in five key steps mm. that Actually, are going the, to take you to the next level. The, the super cool title that you wrote in the notes, because this is your podcast. Would you like yes. that title? I don't know. Six pack in five steps. I like the play. Boom, boom, boom. Woo, I love it. Oh, I love yeah. it. So, All good things have steps. <laughs> this they one do. Has five. And, it, you know, it really keeps it easy to, well, it, it helps people remember the the main points and what to do. So that's that's the cool part. So tonight we're going to be doing a lot of stuff like dispelling myths about how to get a six pack and giving you tons of tips on how to get a six pack. So you just do a bunch of crunches, right? Yeah. You know what I love? That's so all yeah. you have to do. Is that's when it. I do a bunch of crunches and I go and out stretches. and eat a fucking happy meal. Mhm. And uh, I should have abs, but I don't. A not so happy meal. I did a crunch. I don't understand why I'm not ripped yet. <laughs> well, there is. And I drink a, so much milk. Like what? I should have a. I mean, it really does the body cut. good, right? Yeah. Milk does. Remember all those commercials from when we were kids, where like milk does the body good. And there's always some jacked dude with a six pack, or some like super toned chick drinking milk with a milk mustache. Yeah, definitely. At 13, I realized that was hot. Unfortunately, but. I bought into the whole drink milk thing. I used to drink a gallon of milk. Well, that's what we're taught. We're taught from like the <laughs> youngest of ages that you know drinking milk is healthy for you. When actually, drinking cow milk is not healthy it's for the you. Worst possible fucking. And thing. a lot of people right now listening are like, "What? No, you go look are... it up. Go Google it and look at the reasons of why cow milk is bad for you. Go for almond milk." Well, we're the only species on the planet that drinks milk after we're weaned. I mean, like, come on. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and I do drink almond milk, but that doesn't come from animal boobs, so I feel much better about it. So <laughs> it's not loaded with hormones and all sorts of other shit. Yeah, definitely. So that being said, uh, milk. I not totally part of- remember being like 12 or 13 years old. I'm like, that's it. I'm, I'm so over being a little chunker bunker. So I started running. <laughs> And I would what? go running and I just remember <laughs> just like going as hard as I could down the street and I really only made it to the end of the street and then I'd run all the way back and I'd come in and just drink a ton of skim milk. <laughs> like sounds, a ton of it. Sounds wild. And it was cold and it was like so good back then. I just, I remember loving it, but I drank so much and I couldn't understand why I never got in shape. Well, here is well, how, uh, one ahead. of the reasons was, is because you probably drank right from the carton. You didn't even pour it in a glass, did you? You filthy animal. Oh. <laughs> How did you? Were you there? Were you spying on me? Maybe. <laughs> Fred, I always felt like somebody was watching me. But let me just dispel something publicly. It was like, me. Brandon's favorite thing on earth is to sneak up and break oh, into yeah. the house when I least expect it. So, like, he has made me go pee pee on myself, like, yeah. probably 20,000 times. She's not lying. Like, Why? I'll be, I'll really be sitting there, that. like, door. Oh, yeah. he came one time, yeah, through the back door. <laughs> Another time, another time I'm sitting there at the, at the, uh, what do you call that thing? Where did you wash dishes? Oh, the, the the sink, the sink. Yeah. And I've got this window right in front (laughs) and his head just like emerges upward and you just like see his creepy eyes. He's got like this demented smile on his face. That was terrifying. She about shit herself. Another time I I was, when I was in uniform, I came out, I came straight from the the academy and I was instructing. I was in uniform. He was waiting for me in the kitchen and she walked in. She thought I was a murderer. She she thought I was a police officer. She shit herself. (laughs) I was like, wow, wow. Like I just been freaking out and he just like stood there and I'm like, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, no, well, it was a good time. That was a good time. But, you know, we were talking about milk and how you used to drink it and how the, the uh, we're just, we are sheeple for advertising when we're younger. Like, Absolutely. Here's, here's how good advertising is. Um, when I was, uh, let's see, I was a junior in high school. I was on the wrestling team. I was on varsity and I sucked. I was terrible at it. Thank God pro wrestling and collegiate wrestling have nothing to do with each other. Two totally different sports. Point is, I was super thirsty after every practice. Mm-hmm. And my mom's like, you want me to get you something to drink afterwards? I'm like, yeah, I love a two liter bottle of Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is like my thing. So my mom- after, Mountain Dew not. After every practice- <laughs> Shut up, so <laughs> oh, Would have perfect. a cold two liter bottle of Mountain Dew waiting for me. And instead of drinking water- Stop spinning my chair! <laughs> Instead it's of, driving me crazy. Yeah, this is the last. If you pull thing. those, if you pull those headphones out, this podcast is over. Oh. So, 
I would I would <laughs> drink the entire fucking bottle of Mountain Dew every night after practice. Wow. Good for you. Five, and I wondered, I wondered why I would sit How do you not have like ceiling. crazy growths happening or something? I, well, he does. They're called muscles. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> true. Good but, point. But that is so what average, I'm, like, I'm surprised I'm not diabetic, dude. Speaking of diabetics, we were, we were commenting on that earlier. And for those of you that are diabetic, don't, don't think yeah, we're don't, making funny. We're, just, we're not making funny. It was a, a discussion we were having about diabetes and how actually the Genesis program is good for them. The keto diet is actually a very healthy diet for a diabetic. So back to back the six to pack. diet. Yes. Uh, the number one way to get a six pack, and you guys may or may not want to hear this, but it's the truth. The number one way to get a six pack, it's all in diet. Mm hmm. Well, Preach. I don't want to say it's all in they diet. They say but no, the great like apps are 90, made in the kitchen. Ninety percent of it is diet. It really is because you can work as hard as you want in the gym. You can do all the fucking running you want, but if you go home and drink a two liter bottle of Mountain Dew every fucking night, or eat you know Mickey D's whatever every single night, or pizza no. or whatever, like you're not going to get the body that you want. That, that is that. a stone cold yes. fact. Yep. I love that phrase. Great abs are made in the kitchen, and that's beautiful. And I've heard eighty. I've heard um, anywhere from eighty to ninety-five percent of your results are made in the kitchen. When it comes to, are you seriously kicking my microphone and spinning my chair? <laughs> I am sitting between the, these two crazy animals well, right I'm now. Trying to one is your... kicking the, the microphone with his bare foot. The other well, one is you spinning do this my thing chair. When you look at when you look the other direction, you move your mouth away from the microphone. So yeah, you got to just learn yeah, to turn the mic. Yeah, you got to have the mic right it's up on your mouth. It's a directional condenser mic. You have to be. Both Looking of you are going to get smacked. Um, okay. Anyway. So, so but, you know, we're talking about. So I have, I have heard that it's anywhere between 80 and 95% of your results. But now I am 95? under, I have heard that. And, and I've actually repeated Did that. Did you read that on a forum? There. <laughs> Did Lord you Google almighty. that on a wiki? 95%. But huh? now I believe that 95% of the results <laughs> come from step number five that we're going to be talking about and that diet is whatever's left over. Wait a just, so wait a wait a just oh, jump I'm everywhere. I'm what are you oh, doing? man. Well, here's the thing about diet is that, you know, we're, we're sitting here talking about, oh yeah, Mickey D's and this and that and that, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is most people don't actually know how to eat for their goals. They may try to eat. I get, we get this all the time. You've mm -hmm. seen it like on the comments and in and the messages, mm -hmm. Brandon, Absolutely. where we get, I eat healthy. Why can I lose weight? Or I'm eating, I'm eating healthy. I eat real healthy. And I'm like, okay, well, what's healthy? <clears throat> Excuse me, and we start we start pulling it apart. Well, eating healthy might be eating you know two times a day, or mm -hmm. might be eating three or four times a day, and then maybe loading up on carbs and fat yep. all together. Or they may just be, you know, they may have an asinine amount of carbs. And there's uh, nothing wrong with carbohydrates. There's nothing wrong no. with fats, but the combination of the two, abs no likey. <laughs> well. That's true, um, but like kind of like Gabe was saying, everything in moderation. You have first of all, you have to know how your body is going to respond to different types of nutrition because everyone's bodies are different. Um, what works for me, like I, I give you a good example right here. What works for me, carb wise and protein wise and fat wise, is completely different than what works for Gabe. Right. And I have. Uh, I remember when we first started doing this, I tried to eat what you ate, and I would just copy you, and I would not get any type of results. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember, and I like remember me. you were telling me you'd be like, dude. Don't copy me. Don't eat what I eat. <laughs> and I'll be like, no, fuck you, dude. I'm going to eat what you eat because you look like you. But you right. and I are very similar. Yeah, and Priscilla and I are very similar with how But we, we also hang on to our muscle easier. Yeah, exactly. Which, like, so hey. that's why Gabe looks small and I look huge. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but I notice I don't even <clears throat> flinch. I know. He's just, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So my point is. Uh, 265. Uh, anyway. All right. So I'm 225. Anyway. So I'm only 6'1". Anyway. What my uh, point uh, is. Uh, uh, my this sounds like it's just a <laughs> load of excuses. Stop attacking Can you, you jerk. I'm only six shut one. I'm your swole mouth. I'm only six one. Yeah, my mouth is swole, bitch. Swolverine. Anyway, swole beard. my point is, first of all, you have to learn of how your body reacts to different types of foods. And depending on what your goal is, either to gain weight or gain lean body mass to, you know, or to lose weight or whatever it is, you have to learn how your body reacts to certain types of nutrition that you're putting into it. It's, a, it's absolutely true. And the closer that you're eating to nature the more that your body's going to know what it's doing when it's it's when it comes to abs. Yeah. And so here's, you know, a couple of things that we're going to touch on are foods. The the foods that people ingest on a daily basis. And one of these foods, well, I'm going to call it a food, but uh, it's it's literally as, as far as the statistics are concerned, it's the highest caloric intake in America. Soda. Soda. Speaking of Mountain fucking Dew, 
soda. <laughs> Remember the way that we explained it to Mia last night when she was asking what soda is? Oh, yeah. Priscilla's like, well, you know those chemicals we use to clean the no, house No, I with? said, you know those chemicals that we don't use to clean our house? That we that we don't use, that's right. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, mommy. And, and I said, you know, if, if you drank them, you know, the, the harm that would befall a body. Yeah, absolutely. And and what did, what, did we, what did we say? I just blurted out. I'm like, yeah, it's phosphoric acid. It's terrible for you. It I said, basically, things. it's like drinking that cleaner, but it tastes good. Yeah, well, that's exactly what you said. Because it actually <laughs> was derived as a cleaner originally, right? An industrial cleaner. Well, I don't I don't know if that's... For cleaning yeah. ass, Coca-Cola was. I don't honestly mm. remember that. It's very plausible. Maybe that's gossip that just like... Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you a real story. My friend Robert Kane, who worked with me at the city of Dana Point in the planning department, where our cubicles were literally apart from each other. And for anyone that doesn't know, I have a degree in civil engineering, and I worked at uh, the city of Dana Point in Southern California as an engineer, civil engineer in the public works department for like five years geek out yeah. super geek i can design a fucking bridge anyway geek out so robert used to work at mcdonald's he was the manager there before he went to college and everything and he said he's like dude when we couldn't clean the grills when there was just shit stuck on them we just go over to the coca-cola uh, yeah. machine we know dump the, it on it and, scrub. and they would literally put a rag under there and soak it in Coca-Cola, and then they'd scrub, and he's like, the grease would come right off. Yeah. I'm all, dude. I remember, but maybe it wasn't derived for I remember that as purpose. a kid doing those uh, those elementary school science experiments, those science fairs, they would always have that one kid who would do like the before and after effects of leaving like teeth or some type of like dissolvable something. In a cup. In a cup, and showing you like 24 hours later, yeah, or, you know. just gone. Just, yeah, or rotted out. Right. And how much less sustainable is like your digestive tract? It's oh, yeah. soft tissue. Yeah, no, you're you're fucking your body up. Yeah, I mean the the immediate. And that, uh, and sorry, well, don't mean to interrupt you. That doesn't mean that none of us have drank soda. Obviously, we're not oh, saying that we're holier than thou. Oh, because we've all drank I'm soda. A Jack and I mean, Coke you know what I'm every saying? Plane, every plane, absolutely. Ride we take. Jack and Coke. You know, like I say, yeah, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Coke is bad for me unless it's mixed with uh, Jack. Oh, so. Unless we're on an airplane and the stewardesses are giving us free Jack and Coke, which I happened by the way, we got all. a shit ton of free you. Jack and you Coke. use actual yeah. Coca Cola in your Jack? Uh, yeah. You it, must sneak it. What? She brings it to me. Yeah. You drink scotch on the rocks, darling. Well, that was yeah, his well, last flight. Yeah. The flight when we went to Austin, I was throwing back Jack and Cokes. Yeah. No, mm. that was one of his. That's what he texted me. He was very proud. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's a very done. rare. thing Well, no, that's what we're you. saying. Like everything in moderation. Like we're not yeah. saying that we don't ever do it or that we never do it but but that's you know we we don't have it on a daily basis so yes. we know we're talking it's about like every the, three months or something we're talking about the digestive issues that come with it but the immediate effects of drinking soda is that it's loaded with high fructose corn syrup mm -hmm. which i mean it's not even a food it's literally a, a super dense uh caloric syrup so you're just ingesting pure sugar mm -hmm. basically c6 and anytime H1206. Is that the uh, that's the chemical form? that's the chemical <laughs> makeup of it? How the hell do you know that? Because Brandon knows all sorts. He's of cool so stuff. much smarter he's than he so lets on. So smart. Like he'll, <laughs> oh, fuck he'll you, walk. bro. <laughs> <laughs> he plays dumb, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just for the ladies. <laughs> Suck my ass. <laughs> so, and then for those of you that are going, well, I drink diet soda. Well, guess what? When you get into <laughs> diet sodas. <laughs> You've, been, you've seen that family guy cut yes. away where like yes. there's that real heavy chick in the office. And <laughs> yeah. She's like, diet soda? Now I can eat anything. She yeah. pulls out like a plate of pasta. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's not how it works. Well, the thing about it is that uh, the artificial sweeteners have actually, they've done tests on them and mm -hmm. studies that have shown that the way it affects your pancreas, you still release insulin Absolutely. into your body, which causes you to retain what? body fat so yep. it, you instantly go to fat storage as soon as you drink that so your pancreas is on you know it's lit the whole fucking time. highly I dangerous said it right that time right for diabetics so, okay, cool. as well yeah. it's I've like a party that you don't want in your pancreas <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be lit in your pancreas no you really don't <laughs> anyway so and that's soda is just one example of those foods that are you know or drink substances that people yeah. go to you know and then they wonder why they can't lose weight you have to cut out the candies you have to cut out the the sugars the sweets the sodas the Anything high carb packaged. foods well and yeah. if you're if you're truly serious about seeing some washboard abs or if you've never had abs before and you're really trying to get them which is why you're probably listening to this fucking podcast in the first place the next step is to get rid of alcohol you, mm -hmm. And if you're if you're trying to make a run for it, and let me tell you guys, once you're there and your abs are visible, it's very easy. 
well, I don't say it's very easy, but it's a lot easier to maintain because you can see, you know, if we go binge over a weekend, you know, like B and I and, you know, whatever, we, we binge at the fight. Well, actually, mm-hmm. you weren't here. You were at the fire station, but like me and Howie. And, well, we binged when we were in uh, uh, Seattle. Oh, yeah, we totally. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did, you know? did we ever binge? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we were flat. Like our abs were flat. And if we you can see that if you continue down that route. There's going to be body fat on top of it, but because we get right back onto our diet, we get right back on the nutrition plan. You know, it's like it's a once every now and then thing. The effects are not as noticeable. And the reason that I don't binge with you guys and go crazy is because I feel like we're always being watched. You're fucking perfect. And and sometimes people walk. Oh no, I'm not perfect. I have this like major level of accountability. Okay. I feel like when people okay. look at me and and they say back she's the eating hay truck up a donut yeah. or something, Did they you don't just understand. Say you didn't binge with us. I didn't binge with you. You had so, every bit of You many. had so much Fucking alcohol. Tequila and vodka yeah. on that flight as we yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, I like food yeah. How so many drinks did you spill on yourself first, and me and First, take a big step back <laughs> and literally fuck your own face. <laughs> <laughs> true. Okay, well, true she didn't binge on food. That's absolutely true. Oh, I didn't binge on food. She and, didn't and partake I guess, in that. And I guess the, the point that I was trying to drive home is that there is like a level of accountability and, and people are confused when they... Can you stop turning my chair? <laughs> I'm, I know. He's turning my chair and I'm trying to what? like do the mic thing hold at the same time. the shock time. absorber. Don't hold the mic. Don't touch the mic. Hold the shock absorber right there. Yes, yeah, so. Go. There you go. It's gentle. It's delicate. It's, it's, you know how to do that, right? All right, let's go. Press it. <laughs> so, again, guys, at once the point is once you get down to this lower body fat where you can actually see your abs come and then go if you start falling off the wagon, it's a lot easier to look in the mirror and go, Oop, okay, definitely need to make a change right here. But mm-hmm. if you're farther away, what's going to help is making a run for it and like setting a goal, you know, 12 weeks, whatever. Like all our programs are 12 weeks because that's really about as long as it takes to see serious results. So if you cut out the alcohol for 12 weeks, it's not going to fucking kill you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Just say, okay, look, I fucking want this. I want abs and I'm going to spend 12 weeks getting them. I'm not going to drink. My friends are going to go out. I'm going to be the D, the, the, not the DUI. The, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the, uh, the DD. The DD. <laughs> and then so, you're the hero too as a DD. So yeah, of course. And you get to people watch and it's fun. We've all done it. Yeah. And, and uh, you end up with awesome abs. Yeah. So uh, other things that we want to avoid. Packaged foods. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, if you, if Priscilla, what do we, when we go into a store, where do we go first? And what do we avoid? Well, we try to eat as close to nature as possible. And I go straight for the produce center and I get everything that I need. And pretty much there's really nothing in the center of the grocery store. Yeah, we that... literally <laughs> fucking Brandon. the the crude gestures he's making over here. <laughs> we, we literally make a loop around the outside of the store. We don't touch any of the packaged foods in the center. It's loaded with shit and chemicals and preservatives and stuff that your body hates and the result of eating that consistently is a higher percentage of body fat that's really hard to lose. And one thing I interject, a lot of you who are listening are saying, well, you know, eating natural foods or eating the healthier foods is super expensive. I don't have the money for that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell you right now that's fucking bullshit. Yes, there are certain foods that you can eat that are more expensive, but I'll tell you what, I've been broke more times than I can, I would like to admit. And Gabe can, you know, uh, I was there affirm for yeah. this and, and I still made it work and you can, you can eat, the way that you're the way that if you want to have a certain goal, you can eat in the direction of that goal without breaking your bank. It is possible. And also Gabe wrote a brilliant article called bodybuilding on a budget. Yeah. And, and it definitely addresses all those concerns and questions and comments that are very common with the first person who says, well, it's impossible to yeah, you know, eat so I'm just gonna it's eat too fast expensive. food. I'm like, yeah, that's no, bullshit, that's total dude. bullshit. You go buy a bag of rice, even brown rice, dude. What, is, what does that cost? A couple of bucks? And that'll yeah. feed you for a fucking week. Yeah. And you can use those carbs daily, you know, daily, yeah. in small, small portions. Or you can buy a package of chicken or whatever. Yeah, or and, buy a giant. Go to fucking Costco. Yeah, go Costco, to Costco. And if, that's what that... that or, go that, to, or go to, you know, your local, like, low-budget grocery store, Food Max, grocery outlet. Like, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Don't be ashamed of where you shop. Yeah. It's, Are you, you kidding know? me? It's a, it's a bargain. It's a bargain. And yeah. it's food. I go mean, for I, it. At one point, we all ate Top Ramen in college. Yeah. Because it was, like, 50 cents a thing. And if you didn't, then you're blessed. All right. Fuck you. <laughs> the, you know, the point being that it, it can be done very easily. You just have to, you know, not... Do a little bit of research. Yeah. And so, the, the article brand is referring to is a bodybuilding diet on a budget if you guys google that it'll pop up there's a big picture black and white picture of me going with like most muscular pose going rah but it's uh, actually sorry what was that one more time rah 
<laughs> I actually uh, I, give, <laughs> I give you guys a Costco shopping list in there to actually help with this and it I think it was for keto too if I remember correctly it was so it was which for is those of you perfect. saying that fats are too expensive to buy this will disprove that because there's coconut oil there's olive oil when you buy in bulk you pay more at that time but it lasts you way longer Mm-hmm. And how do you want to feel with the foods that you're putting into your body? Because your body is going to respond to these things. If you're eating packaged foods, if you're eating chemicals, your body doesn't know how to assimilate it. So, and so a lot of the times it'll get stuck in your digest- digestive tract. And- per- perfect example. Perfect example. As what she's talking about is your body becomes accustomed to the foods that you're eating. If you make a change, you will feel a certain way. You will feel better or you feel worse. I'll give you a perfect example. We were on a fire uh, this past Thursday. And we spent the night on the fire line and they we didn't have any food, so they brought out food to us. They brought us KFC. Oh KFC, right? Oh and we were I mean we were famished. We hadn't eaten in I would say about eight hours, nine I can, hours. I know where this is going. Right. And we ate it. <laughs> Me and my partner, we ate it. Uh, and he and we both like looked at each other after and we like we feel like we're gonna fucking throw up <laughs> Because and what my my point is is it, it's like putting in the wrong type of gas in, into your car Yeah, you know, you, it just doesn't fucking work and your body becomes attuned To having certain types of nutrition and feeling a certain way and your body knows when you're doing something that, that it shouldn't be after a while Well, what I and you I, just feel like absolute shit. I really want to know uh in the uniforms that you guys wear when you're out there, the yellow ones that mm-hmm. are like all Nomex, there, yeah. Did you shit yourself in that? Uh, it's and happened once or twice. Yeah, we if all. so, do you just keep going? So we actually have what's called. <laughs> <laughs> there have been no, all right, no joke. Here we, it comes. No, there, no, there, it. no, there, there, been, there have been times where we actually do have to shit on the fire line, and what we'll do is we'll use a shovel from the tool from the tool compartment and we'll, fire and, we'll, break. and we'll use mountain money we'll use some fucking toilet paper that mountain we money <laughs> yeah, that's what it's called <laughs> and we will fucking go and we will find a spot and we will do our business bury that shit and <laughs> then back to work yeah go back to work and then set it on fire uh no no <laughs> <laughs> what do i do with the brown that's no fun the brown the brown, the brown. What's the brown. <laughs> so yeah. one one point that I wanted to make about the packaged foods, about the chemicals that you're putting in your body, your body doesn't know how to get rid of them. So it'll line your intestines, it'll line your your colon tract, and not allow you to be able to um, properly eliminate. And so when or it's, assimilate too. Or assimilate. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just gets stuck in there. And a lot of times your belly will expand um, because it's irritated. Your digestive tract is irritated and doesn't know what to do with it. Um, it'll also call cause the kidney and the liver to swell, causing a thicker appearance around mm-hmm. the waistline. So if you eat clean, if you're eating foods from nature, if you're eating foods that your body understands, you're going to look better, but you're also going to have more energy um, because when you're intestines is lined with these chemicals that it doesn't know what anything to, doesn't know what to do with it um you know it just it ends up making you drag it makes you a lull yeah mm-hmm. Absolutely. one other item that's on this list here that is uh, i can't even begin to stress this uh people always talk about using mass gainers or weight gainers <clears throat> And they want to gain weight, they want to bulk up, and they want to get big. But, you know, of course, the idea is when you're bulking up, putting on muscle mass, you don't want to gain body fat at the same time. And there's this misconception that people think, oh, I can bulk and shred simultaneously. It's like, I get this That's all. Even so, one of my buddies texted me today. I hadn't talked to him in years. And he was just like, hey, dude, I really need your help. And I'm like, okay, well, before you, you know, before I start doing anything for you, what are your goals? He says, well, I need to cut like 15 and gain muscle. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, hang on. The first thing you do is just cut. Let's just cut. You're not yep. gonna you're not gonna bulk up. You're not gonna eat huge. You're gonna cut. But that being said, a lot of guys use these mass gainers thinking that they're gonna gain huge amounts of muscle, and that's not the case. It's literally just freaking cornstarch in there. <laughs> I was like, well, and that's the whole point of the mass gainer. It's just, it's just to give you the most amount of calories possible to feed. You know your workouts and they're sugar carbs. and exactly. oh yeah your amount of hunger that yeah you and they don't realize that you know these mass gainers have like what 1200 calories per fucking scoop and right. like 80 carbs in them you know what i mean like yeah. it's just not hey that's I do, not what you I do 80 carbs post-workout uh, but it's and different. pre-workout okay all right it's totally but it's different. not <laughs> so what it's not so i'll give you an example food. when we were when we were doing ct fletcher when we were prepping for it yep I cut down. I cut down, and I and it, you have to get out of that mindset. Like it's it's totally like it well, fucks, we, we were it fucks with you. That, it dude. fucks with you. It totally does. I'll totally admit it. You're just like fuck. I'm losing my gains. I look small as fuck. I don't feel strong. I'm small. I'm tired. What the fuck? And now what Gabe, the, what Gabe was talking about is you have to cut first 
and then slowly, healthily bulk up. And that takes time. That takes a lot of time to do. And by bulk up, Brandon means add add muscle mass at a larger, faster rate than when you're trying to cut. Because in order to add muscle mass, guys, you have to have you have to have carbs because you need Mm -hmm. glycogen to be strong and to push through the workout. So when you're cutting, it's the exact opposite. You're pulling the glycogen out of your muscle cells. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, you're causing rapid fat loss because your body has no other energy source but its own body fat to use. Mm -hmm. So that's where the fat loss comes from. But yeah, I mean, this is a great point because you got to shred first, lose the muscle, or not lose the body fat first, and then go back. And once you got a nice lean frame, and you're showing the muscle that you have, maybe even gained a little bit of muscle. I mean, because you can still gain some muscle in the mm-hmm. process Absolutely. just for making the mind muscle connection. If you haven't done it before, like that's what's so great about Genesis. Like our Genesis program, I got people that just they gain. They actually they defy what we preach. Somehow they gain muscle and lose body fat simultaneously to make these amazing transformations. Yeah, but I, I truly but we believe, don't advertise that you do both. No, because that's a same. very very rare but case. I and if truly, you can do it, good for you. For believe, some reason, it's happening, but. <laughs> I, I believe that it's the 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 mind muscle connection, the the brand new fresh neurological connection that people are making between the mind and the muscles that's causing that growth. And so that's why when we're younger or if you haven't lifted weights in, ever in your life, and you go pick up a set of weights, whether you're eating good or not, you're going to gain some muscle because you have this fresh neurological connection, and your mind's like, oh, okay, you're doing stuff. Well, let's put some muscle there, and then eventually it adapts, and it's like, okay, well. I did all I can do. And on the Genesis diet, it is going to increase your testosterone levels too, which is an invitation for muscle to appear. That is true. That is, you should know you designed the diet. Master sports nutritionist. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, hello, Gogo. And a pit bull has entered the room. There is a pit bull in my studio. Okay, you need to leave. (laughs) Yep, goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Say something. Goodbye. So, So moving on to point number two, I don't know if there's anything else that you guys feel we need to Need to what? Oh, did I stop? I'm like, oh, I, I'm pointing, I thought you were snapping at me. You're snapping at the, the dog. I'm like, pointing the pit bulls to what? get out. <laughs> I know I'm snapping my fingers like, no pit bulls in the studio. <laughs> I, I just have dog slobber all over me. Okay, so number two. Uh, so number one, well, let's recap. Number one was diet. Eat as close to nature as possible. Avoid foods like soda, uh, sugar-free sweeteners. Stay away from packaged foods, mass gainers. Ditch the alcohol if you're really serious about getting Switch to water. Yeah, drink more water. Drink tons of water. Because, like, yep. did you guys cover that? Did I miss that? No, we missed it? water. We missed it. So, it, real quick. Very quickly. Yeah, so water, I mean, obviously, you, you need it. I mean, it, there's no way around it. And one of the rules that you might want, well, rule of thumb that you might hear thrown around is like a gallon a day. And that's that's really hard to do. And that's, that's you don't really need to do a full gallon a day because you'll be bloated as fuck if you do. And definitely don't they drink say, it all at once. They no. say eight, eight ounce failure. glasses of water a day or yeah. 64 ounces of of yeah. water a day. And then I learned in school well, that you do five to 10 ounces for every 15 to 20 minutes of physical activity. Yeah. So it really is pretty accurate to say a gallon of water. What's that, 120 Just, ounces, I think? Yeah, like I think that. Yeah, so, it's, like it's, it's, for me, it's easy. I mean, look, but make it your nervous. Make it your nervous habit. Drink water. Yeah, no, and you'll be pissing like a racehorse. Well, the other thing too is that I, all I drink is water. I don't drink juice. I don't drink soda. I don't drink yeah. anything. I mean, I'll add BCAAs during a workout, but this yeah. is all I drink. Yeah. And like, and it's fine. And it's nothing added water. It's and not wa- electrolyte water. It's and not. It's tap water. Water, um, not only yeah, filtered I mean, not tap a, water. I mean, it, well, it, water it helps your digestive system, and it also boosts your metabolism. That's, I mean, water is a natural fat burner. Actually, you know, it, it helps. It raises your, your basal metabolic yes, exactly. uh, temperature. So, and that's one of is the that thing. Basal. I think it's just basal temperature is what I meant to say, not basal metabolic temperature. I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was a cool term. <laughs> I'm just making sure. I like this. So, yeah, definitely add that water in there. And and again, like these are, they might sound like simple, you know, little steps that you should be doing, but they're often they're often the ones that are missed. That the basic building blocks of starting your uh, physical journey are is it's, it's needed. And sometimes these key steps are just missed, and that's why. Some people are not able to reach their physical goals. And when you put them all together, exactly. you have this cumulative effect of everything acting uh, you know, in synergy. So the one little thing may not matter, but like when you do 10 of them in a row, like now you, you, know, you got all the gears turning. So it's just starting to work. And we're spending a lot of time on diet because it is super duper important. But yes. keep in mind, if you're struggling to get your six pack because you're overeating, um, mm-hmm. that was kind of my jam back in the day. You'll notice that you're not going to be as hungry if you're ingesting water. A lot of times um, it'll fill up your belly. Um, and, and another huge thing is if you're hungry, a lot of times you're just starting to feel dehydrated and what you're really wanting is fresh oxygenated foods from nature, like vegetables, like fruits, and you need fresh water. 
one thing uh, some people don't know is fruits actually have a ton of carbs in them. So be careful. Uh, oh, good point. Yeah. So I didn't even know that for the longest time. I was like, why the fuck? Like fruit, you think natural, healthy, like, and it is, it is natural. It is healthy. However, if you have a specific goal to lose body fat, you have to take into account that fruit carries a shit ton of carbs. Put it's, down it's the pineapple. Does. It's sugar, but it's, yeah. it's a good kind of sugar. Yes, it's, it's good sugar. Your body assimilates it differently than refined sugar, but it's still a carb. And so that's where they get the difference. I hear eating healthy all the time. And yeah, eating fruit is very healthy for you, but eating for your goal is totally different. Absolutely. And so that's why, you know, you get a little bit of, uh, um, tug and pull here because um, you know bodybuilding isn't necessarily the healthiest of choices mm -hmm. when you think about this I'm just gonna lay this out here because we always we always promise to be as real as possible yep. on our podcast preach mostly mostly <laughs> kicks her under the table <laughs> is better than having my chair spun if, so you, I'll take if that. you think about bodybuilding we have a very <laughs> high protein intake mm -hmm. and we have a very low well not a low vegetable intake i still get my veggies but it's basically not the healthiest choices uh the large amounts of animal meats that we're eating create i mean it basically it's a breeding ground for autoimmune diseases it really truly is it's, or, hard, it's hard on your liver it's very and hard on your kidneys or according to epigenetics is it more about what you believe about what you're doing well, and well, that's a, that's a great point there because there have been some extreme my, breakthroughs. My in, grandfather in scientific is ninety four years old. He still drives. He still walks. Totally fine. Rides his recumbent bicycle for what four minutes a day every day, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he eats a steak a week, drinks scotch, and has a brownie. Has a thing of brownies once a week. He's done it his whole life. So, I really shouldn't say that those things aren't aren't you know doesn't come into play. But what I'm saying is that. You know, if you, tr I, I don't know. I, I mean, the research is there to support that it may not be the healthiest thing. Although I feel like I'm the epitome of health. You truly right are. I eat a shit ton of greens that go along with everything. I, um, I supplement with spirulina and chlorella every morning. We have them in capsule forms. And if you guys don't know what spirulina and chlorella are, look them up. They're superfoods that come from uh, green algae. They, act and they, they also detoxify your body of yeah, heavy they, metals they that you may or metals. may not be getting from your tap water yeah. if it's not properly right. filtered. And that, that is a whole nother topic. So We will talk water with you guys one day. But. Yeah, but there's we ingest a lot of heavy metals over our lifetime and yep. it leads to autoimmune diseases. And so spirulina and chlorella pull that out. It helps keep you young. It, it uh, boosts your immune system. But, the, you know, I do a lot of things to counteract um, you know, the high protein intake that we have. So anyway, that that's just a sidebar. I just want to be honest with everybody. Don't want to deter you from bodybuilding. I don't want to deter you from, um, you know, getting in good physical shape. But in, you know, full well, anything is, I mean, that's I would take that any day over eating fucking Burger McDonald's, King yeah. every single day exactly. and putting that, you know, <laughs> being at risk for diabetes. So, I yeah. mean, where your hormones are getting abused. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to move on to uh, the second part, uh, which is going to be cardio. Cardio. Freaking cardio. Cardio. And we're going to hit uh, three, three major points of cardio. So. Okay, well, first one, guys, uh, obviously. So I think, you know, Priscilla is going to say number five is the most important. And I actually, I really agree with this. We'll get there. But number two, so number one and two are very synergistic. When you hear people talk about getting shredded and getting a six pack, it's diet and cardio. I mean, if you do those two things, you're going to get shredded and you're going to get a six pack. You're going to see your abs. They're the big ones. They really, I mean, this is this is the bulk of the game is diet and cardio. You, There's no way around <laughs> you just have to do your fucking cardio and mm -hmm. it sucks dude i hate running i, I hate the love stairs. running you i love, love the stairs well, well you know why i hate fucking running? weird so I, I hate it because i love the results that i get <laughs> and it motivates me to bust my butt and okay. when you think of it that way your body's going to respond well faster you know what? for the it. rest of us normal people it <laughs> fucking sucks you know there's uh, so many people that love it because you get an endorphin release but you also look in the mirror and you see your six pack and it just kind of stays there. I if you're see consistent. my loss of gains every time well, I get the and same that's, master. So I'm fully in agreement <laughs> with that. Like the results cannot be argued with, which is why I choose to do stairs or some other type of cardio. Sprints. Because sprints. Uh, actually, I, I enjoy sprints. I enjoy sprints because it's quick, it's easy, and you get results faster. And, and what I was that's getting why at I is that every morning. most I people, I, and I, I, um, I know you needed to get that point, but what I was getting at is that most people hate doing cardio because it's so fucking repetitive. And the idea yeah. of cardio nowadays is going to the gym 
and standing on a stairmaster or on a treadmill or on a bike or on an elliptical and being there for an hour or 40 minutes or whatever however long it's going to be for you and you just over and over and it, I, that part i hate if but you when you're listening to outside, something inspiring that'll do you are going to look forward to it positive and input. you're going to want to do it every single day and that's 20 minutes of my time where the sun is hitting my freaking face and I'm feeling energized and I come back and my brain is sharp. And on the days that I don't do my cardio, I don't think as clearly, my emotions aren't as balanced. Cardio is, I XOXO it so much. Well, and, well, and also, okay, that's Priscilla and there's a lot of people who will agree with and her. And you can love it too. You don't have to hate it just because you hear other people say they hate no, it. No, what I'm saying Find is that everyone has She's their own. actually right. Yeah, there's, other, there's so many... Thought I'm process. We're a freaking cardio. fitness company. I'm just salty. No, we're love being it? real. I'm just so, salty. We're being real. Salty. Gonna, okay, I'll put it out there salty. right now. Like, I, I love. I lo- I'm jealous. I'm envious. Uh, envious of Priscilla that she has that outlook on it. But I fucking hate cardio. <laughs> I hate it so much. But I'm still gonna have the testi- the testicular fortitude to do it because I know <laughs> because it's got to be done. Because do I want to do I want to do I want to look a certain way or not? Yeah, uh, that's what it boils down to. Yeah. it's not like we're doing this for pleasure. No. We're doing this because we want to learn look a certain we're not wild animals anymore like we don't run around we're not hunter gatherers where we have to go hunt down a fucking saber tooth <clears throat> tiger if you want to look good you got to put it in the fucking work exactly That's and what it boils down to and there's I mean some people may find that the cardio is the hardest part or the diet's the hardest part or the workouts are the hardest part none of these things are supposed to be easy. And as Gable always tell you, if it was easy, everyone would fucking I was do it. Just about to blow yeah. it. There's, there's <laughs> yeah. two ways. I'm going to break it down easy. real fast. There's there's two ways to cut the cake with cardio. You can run like a sprinter, or you can run like a marathon runner. Look at those two body types. The sprinter is going to be the one with the six pack. The marathon runner, the long distance runner, they're going to be skinny. And depending on what your goal is, you should train like that. I go for 15, 20 minutes for sprint. Every single day. Um, well, you don't just do sprints. You, know, you do hit training. Five usually. I I do both. So, um, but I love is, I love my my sprint sessions. For anyone that doesn't know, hit is high intensity interval training, and it's basically doing an interval of like almost an all out sprint. So, which, whatever you choose to do, you can do it on a, a you know stair mill, you can do it on a treadmill, you can do it on an elliptical. Basically, you give it you know pretty much ninety percent of ninety ninety five percent of your energy. For say like 30 seconds and then you drop down to 70 ish percent something like that So you go down to a jog for the next 30 seconds and you go back up and then go back down and go back up and go back down And you do that and you do those intervals for the entire duration of your cardio that's raising your but heart rate lowering your heart rate and that's forcing your metabolism yep. to keep up Well, the thing about hit is that it's been scientifically proven to increase your metabolism mm-hmm. and you burn more calories throughout the day for up to 24 hours after the workout exactly so you're 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 burning more calories throughout the day uh doing hit than if you did low intensity steady state. and you can mm-hmm. do stairs you can do treadmill but freaking get outside you guys don't be weirdos like you can go outdoors and let the sun hit your face you will feel better it will increase your serotonin levels that's the happy hormone and if you want to feel good take care and love yourself enough to get out there in the sunshine if you can and i don't care if you're jump roping break dancing but get your heart rate up do hit training if you can do fasted cardio if you can well let's and if explain you cannot, why we do fasted cardio yeah and if and there are, uh, and also there are many different thought processes on fasted cardio too. Well, I, I'm a huge fan of it. Absolutely. All right, so you don't want to have to burn through your carbohydrate stores. You want to cut straight to the fat stores, and you always are burning fat, but it's at a very slow rate. Once you begin to move your body and you work th- and you work through your carbohydrate stores, which is like 16 minutes or so, then you start going back to fat burning again. And so the theory of fasted cardio is you go out there first thing in the morning, you've been on an eight hour fast because you're asleep, unless you eat in your sleep. And I don't know, I've done that before. You've actually I sleepwalk. We've I got I got locked in my room when well, I used there to eat. So I'm going to circle back to that in just a second, but I just want to let you guys know, when we were living in San Clemente in our second condo, which was a beautiful condo, by the way, um, it had this beautiful Spanish tile, and on our deck, we could look out and see Catalina Island from there. Priscilla was doing contests. This is when she was you know, going for her pro card, and she would be dieting and dieting and you know dieting down and sprinting in the mornings and shit, and every fucking morning, the peanut butter would be open. And there'd be a spoon in the fucking sink, and, and like a trail, thinking, a, a trail of protein powder. Disaster. I'm like, this is disgusting, like, disaster. And I'm thinking, like, what the fuck happened here? And Priscilla's like, 
Gabe, what the fuck did you do? Finally, I was like, why is this always out? Like, they're yeah, she this yelled is at disgusting. Me, and I'm, I'm like, like I'm Dude, sorry. I didn't do this. And she's like, well, I didn't fucking do it. You know, like, we're both like, well, who fucking did it? So about a week after we have this, you know, uh, heated discussion, as we call them. <laughs> <laughs> this is way back in the day. It's like We've grown three a lot. in the morning and I hear all this noise coming from the kitchen. I'm like, what the fuck? the fuck's going on and i'm like i'm like hey priscilla do you hear that and guess what there's nobody in bed with me and i'm like oh hang on so i go out to the kitchen and i hear priscilla and what do i do i flip the light on and there she is with the fucking peanut butter and a spoon in her mouth and she looks at me like huh? you said i was dipping it into the protein powder i used oh, to take yeah. protein powder back in those going, days she was going from the peanut butter to the protein powder so it's contaminating the protein powder in the Good process and then she's just eating it doing and it. there's just protein powder all the fuck i and was I'm just completely like, asleep she was totally sleep eating like totally and i'm like caught and i was on a low fat diet at the time and i was getting ready for a show and i'm like why am i not leaning out and then i discover this dreadful day where where you you actually slept so, what do you call it sleep eating <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so wait, I, you, I cut you off. You were talking about, what was it, fasted cardio? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. So unless you're eating in your sleep like I was, <laughs> you are going to be on an eight-hour fast. So you are waking up burning fat when you go to your cardio. You don't have any carbohydrate st- stores to work through. Mm-hmm. So your body is forced to use its own body fat as an energy source. And the alternate method is doing your cardiovascular training after your workout so after you weight train because you'll already burn through your carbohydrate store unless you're eating during your workout if you yeah if you absolutely cannot get up to do fasted cardio for some unknown reason but there's always a reason to do it and there's always a way to do it so Mm -hmm. i don't you know i don't fucking buy into that there's all and i'll tell you what there's a lot of science floating around that says it doesn't fucking matter if you do it fasted cardio anymore have you heard that be like just kind of floating yeah i've heard that and that's why i was saying that there's many thought Trains schools of thought, of schools thought. Of thought totally. on that. and here's what i subscribe to is i've done both and the times i get the best results the fastest is fasted cardio yes I, I like there's i'll do the exact same shit dude i will do the exact same hit routine on the stair mill i'll start it like uh i'll start it i'll do a two minute warm-up at like three four five six i'll get to level seven blast at level 11 and then back to seven 11 and seven for like 30 seconds and then uh so i'll do that for 20 minutes and then i'll do that after i weight train not the same results. It's, it's got to be fasted cardio in the morning. Yep. And I, I don't care what the fucking science is. This is me talking from experience. I'm doing this for 24 fucking years. Fasted cardio <clears throat> gets it done. And we're talking about high intensity, low intensity, high intensity, low intensity, like a sprinter for like 20 minutes, 15, mm-hmm. 20 minutes. Or you could s- stay on the treadmill for like three hours. And yeah. If I that mean, makes you, you happy, be, I mean, you should be rock dripping on. in sweat. Absolutely. Dude. Oh, I see. You're talking about doing low intensity. It takes way You're going to look like a string bean, right. but if that's your well, jam, you know, then not go necessarily, for it. I see what you're going with that. Not necessarily. A lot of pro bodybuilders do low intensity steady state uh, because it, it, the theory behind it is that it saves the muscle and you never get into a, a potential muscle wasting um What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a muscle wasting phase. You don't go catabolic. But you can't go catabolic if you have aminos. If if you exactly. veer towards um, muscle wasting, then have a little bit of aminos or have some egg whites before you go out. Well, what I would do in that the morning, will not interfere with the fat burning. Instead of just drinking water in the morning, I would throw ten grams of BCAAs in a shaker cup, mm-hmm. and I take that in with water to the gym with me, and I drink that as I was doing cardio, it's just to prevent going catabolic. And anyway, lo- lo- it and I do really take matter. my BCAAs like, before I I go out on my on my sprints, but mainly just because I it's coffee flavor and I like it with my coffee. Yeah, just mm-hmm. just do your damn hit. All right, so moving on. Number one was diet. Number two is cardio. Number three, engage the abs and core during weight training. And I agree. Like uh, you know, I don't do a whole lot of abs anymore because you don't need to. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we throw around 120 pound dumbbells on a daily basis, and we also have learned again learning how to properly engage your core while you're weight training and that's one of the biggest questions i get is do you ever hit abs actually we always get that yeah do you guys hit abs why don't you do it because literally during every single exercise we are always flexing our our core we're always engaging it and not only does that burn extra calories it also trains your muscles as if you were doing a whole entire ab circuit 
Yeah, and, and it keeps you safe because yeah, absolutely. it's it's building your stabilizer muscles. You're not going to throw your back out. Yada, exactly. Yada. I think for novices, it's especially important to actually train your abs because they don't usually have the mind muscle connection that someone at our experience level would have. So we're consciously thinking to contract specific core muscles when we're doing specific exercises. And it's it's second nature to us. Uh, but for for the novice, for the beginner, you know, yeah, do some do some abs uh, while you're at it. But definitely, like Priscilla was saying, this is you know in in the notes here we've got engage your abs and core during your weight training. And so basically, the idea is if you're standing up, guys, you're doing any type of thing where you're cantilevering the weights, you know, pelvic tilt so your pelvis is underneath you. You're standing up straight with your shoulders back. Flex your core and your abs. Like say it'll just take tricep push downs for an example. That's a great one. Or mm-hmm. even like cable curls or regular bicep, you know, barbell bicep curls, standing curls. Envision Eat. lengthening your body. So imagine pulling a string from the top of your head um, and and from the bottoms of your feet and stretching yourself out so your core is elongated and solid. Mm-hmm. And if you are able to do every lift like that, every single exercise is going to hit your abs. Yep, that was. I, I mean, that's a quick one. We don't need to spend a whole lot of time on that. And, one, but it's and by the important. way, we're almost to point number five. <laughs> we're so close. We're getting there. I mean, there's other cool stuff, but I am just so excited about five. Well, four is one that goes way back to Arnold's time. Yeah, it, it's pretty and it's, cool. It's becoming a fad now again. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. With the, I thought I was pulling this one out of the cobwebs. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I think you when you made the notes, you pulled it out of the cobwebs, but it's actually become a thing. It's a trend because uh, specifically because they brought back the classic physique division. Exactly. Where they're looking for like the, uh, the oh, oh gosh, give me some names, Brandon. I'm dying here. <laughs> I mean, for, like, oh, well, like, I mean, Arnold was perfect for classic physique. I yeah, mean, definitely. Um, and the idea is that small waists are tiny, the big thing. Tiny waist yes. uh, for classic physique. And the idea behind classic physique is more of like the Arnold era, uh, the Lou Ferrigno era, that mm-hmm. sort of stuff where the guys didn't have the giant bellies they have today from... The, Using stuff. Steroids. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's just a side effect, and that's one of. Yeah. And like, I'm not like, we're not knocking it, but like, when you use HGH and you use it in large quantities, what happens? It's a growth everything, hormone. Everything grows, including your intestines. So your mm-hmm. intestines grow, uh, your organs grow, everything gets bigger, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of the Olympians, you know, you don't see them doing vacuums. Actually, I, Arnold uh, with Kai Green. Mm-hmm. You know, he actually took a couple of cheap shots the last contest Kai did when Arnold was presenting him with the uh, the award. And he was like, oh, you know, let's do a good vacuum. You know, let's see that. Didn't, you know? and I was like, dude, that's <laughs> fucked up. Because I look up to Kai. Like, Kai is one of my avatars. And whether, you know, whether or not he has the, you know, the classic physique look or not, he's still, like, number two contender in the world for, what, five years at least. But that being said, um, vacuums. They're vacuums awesome. are the way to go. And to do vacuums, guys, what you do is you stand in the mirror and you literally suck your core in as hard as you can. You gotta lean forward just a little bit mm-hmm. and you suck all your core muscles in as deep and as far and it's gonna look a little weird when you look in the mirror and you have to contract your abs when you're doing it. What it does is it forces all of your organs to compress and it tightens that whole core area and it literally, literally causes your waist to slowly slim down because your organs aren't pushed out. Everything's nice and compact. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think, you know, Piana, God rest his soul, uh, rest in peace, brother. Uh, he had a great, he, he did a great example of how to properly do vacuums on one of his YouTube videos. And it was phenomenal. And I think he was doing them for like 15 second holds is basically what it was. And he would do them for, you know, two or three minutes every morning. And it doesn't take that long. You just got to do 15. It, you, and you'd like, it, the thing is you want to work up longer and longer, but start with 15 second holds, go to 30 seconds. Um, and and know, at first you might not even be able to do five seconds. That's it's okay. hard. If you do them right, they're hard. They, they take a lot of self-discipline. I can also get a really good vacuum when I'm laying down and I kind of tilt my pelvis forward and I'm able to to get it really good. I, I'm able to do them for like. It's already it's, it's <laughs> easier. It's easier to do a vacuum when you're laying down for the simple fact that your your stomach is already being pulled down. Oh, by gravity. gravity. So, helping out. Yeah. Good point. And so sometimes I'll even incorporate them while I'm doing chest or I'll incorporate them with other exercises and I'll hold the vacuum. Ooh, so I know we said vacuum and waist trainer. Oh yeah, so waist trainer is something I'm just sort of starting to play with. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm, I've been kind of using it off and on, but. Well, your, your version of a waist trainer is much different than a guy's version of a waist trainer. So the guys are using basically like a weight belt. 
It's like a little yeah. bit. It, I use a weight belt. I mean, it's it's like a CrossFit belt, basically. Let me let me make. Which, hey, well, by the way, mine's one... missing. Did you steal my fucking belt? No, uh, I have my own. Are you and sure then... you didn't steal my Harbinger <laughs> yeah, no, belt? Because we have no, uh, we have the same belt. But it's I... funny that Howard's is missing too. No, and we're both Howard, was, about Howard was in my bag, and I gave it to him when we were at Stan Bennett's uh, yesterday. You steal my shit? No, you touch my drum set. I'll touch your drum set. Did you touch my drum set? <laughs> anyway, no, I was watching cops. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me make one quick point about waist trainers because here's something that you guys are going to see probably already see it all the time on social media are the super fit females wearing and completely 110 percent advocating for a waist trainer and as if, as if that's like the one golden ticket to making themselves small and and lean and fit that's complete bullshit um they do not get that physique that they have by simply using that waist trainer and also if you use that waist trainer it can be dangerous if that's all you use and you don't allow yourself proper oh, proper dude, adjustment time so, so true. what i'm saying good is point. go ahead and experiment with it that's fine if you want to use it that's absolutely uh, but do not use that as your sole go-to for trying to get in shape and do not overuse it into the point into the that's point really where point. you hurt yourself yeah that's like this is like the equivalent of the magic pill you know it's like oh i'm, you know, yeah. I'm gonna take all these things that you know gabe priscilla and brandon said i'm gonna pick one and but, then it's gonna, i'm gonna get shredded the, way, the <laughs> waist no. trainer it is going to um the, the increase effect it's it's going to increase um, the thermogenesis effect. Yeah, it's going to it's going to thermogenesis. It's going we to got a thinker. thermogenesis. <laughs> yeah, thermogenics. Blink. So it's also going to. Are you done? He's Are you? He's my chair. You're being weird. <laughs> it's, All I can think of was Doctor Evil. It's going to yeah, decrease the amount that you eat because you're not you're not going to feel like you need to fill up your stomach as much. Oh, you said it's going to decrease the amount you're going to eat. Decrease. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Makes yeah, sense. Makes yeah. sense. You guys are being. I would really admit that Brad we're being weird. Yeah. What are you talking right about? Brad's just being a dick. It's not me. What I'm the totally. Fuck? <laughs> Are you you, we just said the same thing, and then you're gonna put that shit on. You're gonna put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> don't, put that, don't, put that, don't put that stick on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> so should we just move to the the most important thing for abs? I'm just well, throwing the notes in the air like that. Boom. Because right. number five, guys, this is where the shit goes down. Drum roll, please. That was the worst drum roll ever. Believe and visualize. I'm gonna throw. If you don't believe that you will have the abs that you're looking for. You will not have them. It's impossible. Well, it's it's not just us saying, oh, guys, you know, close your eyes and think about it. And, but it, it fucking is because we're not the only ones that do this. Aren't we annoying? The pros do this. Mm -hmm. Kai Green has said so many times, you have to see it. Arnold, you have to have a clear vision of what you want. Rich Get Piana, God rest his soul. If you don't believe it's going to work, if you can't see what you're going to look like, you're not going to get there. Mm -hmm. You have to see it in your head. Priscilla used to do these visualizations with me because... Um, you still. Like, well, we still do. A couple but, nights ago. <laughs> well, it, it, But that was different. This one was specific for my, my quads and my legs because oh, I was yes. working so hard and I just wasn't quite seeing the results that I wanted. And she goes, hey, have you done a visualization yet? I'm like, no, I haven't. She's like, well, let me walk you through one. So we did one. And uh, basically she walked me through a visualization and it was like seeing what my legs would look like at 30 inches, which is what my goal was with have 30 inch legs. And I, I, you know, we walked through, it was probably like what a 15 minute visualization that we did where basically I could feel the fibers growing in my legs. I mean, she's really good at these visualization techniques. And so I started doing it on a nightly basis. And I, before bed, I would start visualizing what I wanted my legs to look like. When I look in the mirror in my boxers, I'd flex my legs. And instead of seeing I'm not there yet. I would see what I wanted to see. I'm like, okay, cool. They're getting bigger. I know they're getting bigger and they're going to look like this and that. And it, like in my head, I'm going to use Kai Green again because he's got fucking awesome legs. I would visualize Kai and I'm like, okay, that is what I want. And even though in reality, I don't want legs as big as Kai because Kai's an Olympian. And I swear, I just would, if you don't think I fit in a Lamborghini now. There would be no pants. No. <laughs> no pants. There would yeah. be no pants. But um, if you don't believe you can it do worked. it, why would you even keep trying? But the, You're the going to give up if you think is, that it, you can't do it. It worked. And eight months later, I wrapped a tape measure around my upper quad and I, they were 30 inches. I'm like, okay. I, I noticed legs. that, guys. He said eight months later, not fucking two weeks later. Yeah. You know, not. <laughs> it takes time. It, it was eight months of hard fucking work. It was eight months of doing 
one through five of what we're talking about, plus a bajillion other things. But he kept going b- because he believed that it was going to happen. And, and so same, he stayed motivated. Not only did he believe that it was going to happen, he wanted it to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can believe all you want, but if you don't have that drive to make it happen, mm-hmm. then it will not happen. Yep. And the visualization is what is going to give you that drive when you see it, feel it, taste it, smell it, touch it. And it is there in your physical experience then you will hold it in your hand. It will happen. It's done. I just want to lick a lollipop right now. Why? What the fuck fuck are you? I feel very uncomfortable. You should. Um, So go shopping. You're safe. I'm not within reach. go Go shopping on Google for the abs that you want. Picture them. See them. Maybe they're your abs from like, you know, five years ago or whatever. But get that physical image. Decide that it's done. And then take a minute to visualize. When you're done with those things, drop it and let it go. And just allow it to happen. Because too much visualization, focusing and believing in all this stuff, it, it, it actually decreases your results. Are you okay? Yep. Well, actually, Brandon and I both smell fire at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you smelled it long before I did. But I would hope so. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very interesting. Like ready to go. As we all like get ready to go, Brandon's like, "I need my fire outfit." Yeah, it's like Where's it's like career? Superman. He just runs for a phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see the Deadpool two, the yes. Deadpool yeah, two yeah, trailer yeah. where yes, he's yes, like, yes. he's like stuck in the. How phone is there booth? even a phone booth around here? Yeah. Do they even have these anymore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're dead. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, okay, guys. So that's uh, you know the the importance of believing and visualizing. I cannot stress enough because in. In my theory and in my experience, this is where it all begins. I know it's the last thing on the list, but literally, no matter what it is that you're doing, whether it's trying to get a six pack, whether it's changing your life path, trying to climb the corporate ladder, you're trying to break away from the corporate ladder, start your own business, you're trying to be a better father, a better mother, uh, you want to travel the world, whatever it is, it starts with belief and visualization and I can't say it enough, and this is why I say it on almost every fucking podcast. You got to see it. Mm-hmm. You got to know what it is that you want, and you have to be able to walk yourself through this visual visualization of literally seeing it in your mind's eye. And let it be playful, you guys. Like when you th- th- see this in your mind's eye, and you're looking in the mirror at the gym, pretend that it's there. Think about how you're going to feel when you reach that goal. You will be more motivated to hit those PRs and get your cardio in every day and eat your nutrition plan and drink your water. You're going to eat your nutrition plan? Eat your nutrition plan. I bet it tastes really good. <laughs> yeah. nutrition plan. I just feel like I need to pick, pick a piece of paper and just start eating it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and these are the things that gain visualize. visualize. But visualize. <laughs> I mean, literally, guys. And it may seem silly to you at first. It may seem a little bit uncomfortable. It may just seem different or odd or awkward. And that's that's totally normal because it's not a normal everyday thing that we all do to visualize or see or believe those kinds of things. Like, And, and, and I'll be the first to admit it was kind of awkward for me at first to do that. Um, however, once I did... Uh, I, I instantly started to see those results the way that I wanted to. And I'm not. I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass, guys. Like, I'll be, like I said, I'll be the first to tell you. Like, I was. I would shy away from visualizations. I would shy away from like. It's weird. Like, if you've never done it, it's strange. Yeah. Because it's foreign to. It's not part yeah. of people. But daily I get routine. hardcore. I think that's what makes you feel uncomfortable because you're like no, Priscilla. Not just, that's Silla, so it's not about you. far out. Silla, it's not about you. <laughs> All right. What I'm saying is, from my own experience, it was it was unco- it was not uncomfortable. It was just different for me. And so you have to learn, uh, be open to trying new things. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and you have to. Wait, you, this is a non-binary you just have to podcast. Be willing, shut the fuck up. You have to be willing to try. It. All I can say is, just try it and see what happens. And if you stick with it, if you do exactly what we told you to do, and plus do your own research and and all that stuff you will find that the results come to you. And I think it's important to mention that we're not the only ones in the world that do this. There's some of the most successful people in the world on this yeah. planet yeah. practice this. Yeah. And, and we Tony taught Robin them. Tony Robbins. And we taught yeah. them all everything that they know. Yeah, we did. Andy Frazella has in the MF CEO podcast. He's mm-hmm. mentioned it many times. He does it right before bed every night. Uh, you said Tony Robbins does it. Uh, Warren Buffett. I mean, like, yeah. and you, we're talking like the most powerful people on the planet practice this. So, don't take our word for it. Go look it up. Do some research on your own. So quick recap, guys. If you want to get a six pack, diet. Two, cardio. Three, engage your abs and core during weight training. That way you're constantly working them. Four, waist trainer and vacuums. Instant 
res- well, not instant. I don't want everyone to say instant, but you're going to get some good results of that. And finally, the most important, believe and visualize. Yep. All right. So that is it for the Body Spartan podcast. If you guys are interested in the Genesis program right now, we have a free 30 day trial going on. It's bodyspartan.com forward slash Genesis dash shredding dash program. That's Genesis dash shredding dash program. And that is a free 30 day trial of the Genesis program. If you're trying to get shredded and get a six pack, the keto plan in that program is going to be key to diet. It's as easy as it gets. It auto calculates all that shit for you guys. So I'm trying to make it easy for you. All right, guys, that is it for this week. We will see you next time. Peace out. For more free information on fitness, nutrition, and bodybuilding, visit us at www.bodyspartan.com.